Washington, D.C. has had medical marijuana since 2011, and limited recreational marijuana legislation that allows citizens to grow up to six plants and possess two ounces since 2014. But little is known about the state of the cannabis itself in the nation's capital. Local cannabis reviewer and columnist Joe Torini was so kind to bring us a selection of what is available in the Washington area. So, uh, we have several strains here that I got from the dispensary. Um, furthest over here is the Orange Sunshine. That's from Holistic Remedies. Um, this one is really good for anxiety and depression. It gives you a little bit uh, of a mental energy boost, a little bit of focus. Um, but I also uh, smoked a J of it when I was kind of exhausted uh, later in the evening. And man, I was just falling out of the table asleep. So um, it's a very interesting strain that way in terms of the uh, this brightness is how I would describe it. This, this light brightness in your mind and when you're, you know, what you're looking at. So it makes um, looking at, you know, nice landscapes really enjoyable. Next, we have a brand new uh, flavor from Appels called Fuego. Um, I thought this bud was really pretty and Appels um, is one of the district cultivators um, along with Holistic Remedies, along with Bait and Wellness, along with um, you know some other folks as well. Uh, and they're the newest cultivator to come online. They're related to Capital City Care um, in some way, and you can find uh, their strains all at Capital City Care, but you can also find them at the other dispensaries. So you don't find much uh, from Capital City Care itself at the other dispensaries. You see it occasionally um, because they maintain their own uh, cultivation as well, but Appels is like another branch or something, you know, related to them. And so they also feature the Appel stuff, but the Appel stuff also gets around all the other dispensaries as well. Uh, the next one is another Appel strain. This is Critical Kush. Um, this is one of my favorite strains. It's one of my go-tos for sleep. Um, <clears throat> I always have uh, an easier time sleeping after I've had some Critical Kush. It's not so heavy that you can't smoke it during the day, like, you know, first thing in the morning, but um, late at night, I mean, it just relaxes every muscle and uh, as soon as that happens for me, I know like within 10 minutes, 15 minutes, like I'm just ready to drift off and have a nice sleep. And then I don't wake up still feeling, you know, buzzy. And, um, you know, sometimes if you, I've, I've experienced with blueberry that it'll knock me out, but then I wake up and I still have this kind of, uh, buzz in my head that I don't really like. Um, I don't get that with the Critical Kush. It's just a very nice, comfortable sleep. Um, the next one, of course, is the Abate and Wellness uh, Cashmere. This is Cashmere Red. This is the newest luxury product available, 3.7 grams for $75. But wow, it really does smell and taste absolutely uh, divine. I really, really like this flower. It's, it's a very complex up high um, that I am still enjoying right now. So uh, I can recommend it for quality, but uh, certain people are gonna have a problem with the price. I understand that. I don't come up with the prices, folks. I'm just telling you what it is. Um, the medical prices need to come down and uh, what I've seen on the recreational market is generally fair. I mean, it's a little cheaper, but um, I think they're using the high medical prices to get their prices up as well, instead of really under, because they were undercutting them a lot, and now it seems like they're not undercutting them quite as much. So um, there is definitely some convenience factor, and some people don't want to get a medical card. It's in the news right now that you can't uh, have a gun if you have a medical card. Um, so there are a number of considerations as to why you wouldn't want to get a medical card. Um, and there are options on the recreational market that are good. 
Uh, Laughing Buddha is, is one of them. Uh, this is from Real Deal Gardens and uh, I love this medicine. It is, it smells uh, of chocolate when it's ground up and it hits me with energy, it hits me with focus, it hits me um, with a calm that relieves my anxieties. Um, it gets a little bit euphoric uh, if it had any knock on it at all, but it really doesn't. I mean, it's, it's quite a good medical strain for my particular ailments. This is some California industrial weed that made its way over to DC. A lot of what we get in DC is still um, imported from California or other places. And um, it actually smells like coffee. And it is afku. So um, it should be really, really sticky. And ooh, it is. It still is sticky. It's not anywhere near as sticky as the abatin, but there is definitely a little bit of afku on my fingers. Oh, it's 100% comparable to the quality that you get um, elsewhere. I mean, I haven't been to California personally, so I imagine the stuff that's available in California is better than what they send us from out of state. That's how I hear the system works from everybody, that we just get California's garbage weed and it's still really good. Uh, but from what I've seen recreationally available in Colorado and Washington and Oregon, Absolutely, these products are fire, no question. While quality has matched that of other medical and recreational markets, the price point is still one of the highest in the nation. <coughs> this is largely in part due to the small number of cultivation licenses given out and the limited legal avenues for acquiring recreational marijuana. This has been Stephen Barber, reporting for the Marijuana Times.